guys and welcome back to repair and resell in today's video we're gonna take a look at this ps4 controller but in more particular we're gonna take a look at those two joysticks right here in fact we're gonna do a full teal down of the analog stick model to show you what inside what is inside and how it's working but for the moment i need to take these two out so i'm gonna do this right now here we go, we have got these two out, now we can get rid of the controller and actually one of these is uh, faulty, it's missing uh, the gray part uh, right here so we're gonna use uh, this uh, right one to uh, disassemble it, it's also having some joystick drift issue and this one is not fixable and this is why I want to show you what's inside it. So to make sure you have a better view, I'm gonna get uh, the boxes. This is basically a analog stick model with the uh, thumbsticks removed. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna open it. So first, I, I, we did that a lot of time on the channel, but I'm gonna remove those uh, potential meter. We won't need them. and. I'm gonna give, bring your attention here. Um, basically, if you want to open the, these to see what is inside them, you have those four pins. I'm gonna give you, show it to you with a the screwdriver. There is four pin right here, one ear, one ear, one ear, and one ear that wrap up around this blue part, and this is what is holding the whole uh, module in place. Uh, if you have a working one, I do not suggest you to do what I'm going to do because uh, you can't damage it. But basically, we will need to lift each of them up one by one. And I might uh, get a bigger screwdriver because uh, this one is really small. Maybe we will have more luck by going that way. Yeah, it's going to be easier. And the problem is that if you do that to go check inside any working one, uh, you might not be able to reassemble it correctly. So here is a bigger screwdriver. It should be easy for easier for me to tear this apart. So here we go. I'm not going with the right one. Just like this. Yeah, this one is the sludge now. We're gonna do the same side, the same thing on the other side. Insert it right here. That. And there is only one pin that is holding it in place. Just like that. Now, it will lift up by itself, just like this. And hope this is the metal shield that is going on it. It's holding everything together. And basically, you have. I'm. I'm going really carefully because I want you to show it correctly. Basically, you have two axes right here that is pushed up by a spring underneath it, just like that. And this is what is always centering uh, your joystick back up. With the help of those two plastic pieces right here, I'm going to try to get them off gently. I'm going to start with the white one. So this is one of the axes that is doing the job to keep it center. And there is also that red one here. And it's also uh, this one that is pressing the, the button on the side. When you are clicking on it, it will press uh, the button right. Sorry, when you are clicking on it, it will press the button right here, and this is what uh, allow you to uh, play with uh, L3 or R3 or the or any button that is like that. And this is also working like this. And this is the little spring that goes underneath. You can change it if you want, but as I said, I do not recommend to open these up because uh, putting this back together and the metal shield at the right place could be uh, pretty annoying and it's not a uh, guarantee that you will be able to put back up all in the same place. Now this, this here is the bottom part 
and this is just a normal button. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to take it off as there is some solder uh, down the leg. Yeah, no, there is too much shoulder here and here. I could have cleaned it up better, but it's just uh, inserted if the leg were clean, it will fell uh, right through. So this is just a normal button when you press on it, it's doing the little click, and this is where the joystick is usually uh, in place. Um, if you want, as we are right here, we can take a look at these uh, potential meter, just for the fun of it. Uh, basically, these are a broken one, they are not in a working condition. These one, you can uh, take them off just like that. Taking a look at the inside, we can see the traces. Same thing for this other one. Yeah, and basically uh, these uh, potential meter, the white part is rubbing against those uh, those black traces right here, and this is what is telling you uh, is telling the the controller uh, if you're going right or if you're going left. Actually, we are gonna do a little test with those uh, potential meter. I just want you to show them to you a bit better. It's really hard because focus is not the best thing on this camera. But we're gonna do a little test. We're gonna put it back then. We're, I'm gonna put them back in those things. And uh, we're gonna see, uh, I basically get a multimeter recently for the channel and uh, we can see uh, what uh, the other resistance mechanism is working on these. So I'm uh, getting it, and we can check that. I'm gonna remove uh, these boxes, these boxes, and here is the new guide, new multimeter uh, here that is gonna help us on the channel to do some useful repair. I hope this is the first time I build a multimeter, so I hope uh, I get a decent one. Uh, these are basically the potential meter we're gonna test, it's the same uh, as we saw. Uh, basically, uh, we're gonna measure the resistance between those two pins and between this pin right here to show you uh, how it's uh, going. Uh, I think you can see it pretty well. I put it on uh, 20k ohms because these uh, potential meter are for uh, 10k ohms. So if we want to have a correct reading, we need to do it like that. So I'm going to try to do it like this. It's a bit hard. Maybe I will put them back on something. Okay, and we are having a reading right now. It's about uh, nine, nine kilo ohms. Whoops, sorry, this one was not inserted correctly. So I, this might be the reason why it's so high. I'm gonna try to test it again. I'm gonna try to. Yeah, it's more like when it's perfectly center, it will be more like 6.4. It's going to be something like that. Oh, now I have my finger on it, so it might be uh, the reason why it's a bit uh, it's a bit uh, going up and down. And we're going to do the other side. Don't know why it is so high. Maybe my finger has really misplaced it. Yeah, it's... So I'm gonna put it all. Usually, if it, when it's perfectly center, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be um, like uh, it's gonna be like 6.4 a kilo ohm. But now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna get the one that is in better condition, like this. And we're gonna measure it on this one, and maybe as it's still attached, it's gonna be a bit easier for me to do. Uh, I'm gonna remove that thumbsticks. Here we go. So I'm gonna try on this one, see what we can get. 
we are still on 20k kilo ohms and now it should be perfectly center this one is oops sorry this is a generic version oops I slip again so it's about 4.5 on this side and on the other side it is 4.1 4.2 so it's about the same uh, we can measure this other one 4.5 also and the final one here let's see it's five about so these one are actually a bit more sensible so if we put one to the side I don't know if I can try to trap it no nope, it's brand new so it doesn't want to uh, get trapped but mm, if for example this one this one I turn it completely to one side as you can see and you will see that the rigging is now uh, different I'm just gonna get in place we're gonna do it now see on one side we now have like 1.45 and on the other side we have like 3.5 even lesser maybe I'm moving my finger a bit on it that is why uh, it's changing but this is basically all we the, your controllers say I uh, know uh, if uh, on which side the joystick is going and usually when there is drift it's either the little spring that we see uh, what that we saw right here I'm gonna bring the other piece back that is uh, becoming too weak to center your joystick properly so in this case it's better if you change the old analog model for a new one like this one and sometimes it's because there is dust that come here on there is some corrosion that goes on this uh, particular uh, piece inside um, uh, here are my tweezer and this is basically uh, what is can goes cause some fault so I hope that you enjoyed this new style of video uh, comment down below if you like it this will be it for today's video and have a nice day